Let's bring in Ann Barry for more now. She is the CIO of Wheelhouse Capital, uh, quite a, a, a background, Ann, in private equity. And based on your deal experience, what are the next likely moves here? What do you think Elon Musk is up to? Kelly, bluntly put, the math on the Twitter deal that's out there right now just doesn't work. When you take a look at the amount of debt, 13 billion in traditional financing that he's had to line up, and then the more structured financing, he's been going to private equity to look for preferred equity or for other kinds of debt or hybrid financing, there's just not enough cash generated by Twitter to be able to support the cap structure at that $54 uh, plus a share bid he's put forward. To me, this is a negotiating tactic. That top level enterprise value bid has to come down. He knows it. And I think he's playing for time and he's playing for value. You know, he could say, OK, the deal is going to be done at 4420. I mean, you know, as uh, our Alex Sherman has reported, maybe Twitter sues him if he tries to back out or renegotiate the deal. But as we know, Musk doesn't really care about the traditional way that, that deals are getting done here. So if this is about a lower price, is there really any way that we would avoid that outcome? Well, Kelly, in, in any deal, whether you're buying a house or buying a company and whether that's in the private or in the public market, negotiating by finding diligence out is pretty much par for the course. So the fact that Elon Musk is coming forward now and saying there are some holes in the operations that are causing me to pause, I don't find particularly surprising. Frankly, if anything, I'm surprised it didn't happen a little bit sooner. He's also honing in on a piece of information that Twitter itself has put out in the public domain around bots for the last two or so years when you look in their public filings. So I actually do think this is posturing. I do think there's a chance he still wants to buy this business. I do think this is a price negotiating tactic. And I still believe that he will walk away if ultimately he doesn't get this because I don't think he can get the capital at the value he's looking at right now. I think he's going to have to get it down or he's going to have to get out. So you think ultimately he's, he is likely to have to walk away. I think I just heard you say that. And there is, oh, by the way, the not uh, insignificant uh, uh, fact that uh, Tesla's own stock has fallen dramatically by 25 percent. So he is a quarter less rich than he was, and that stock is moving lower. So he's going to have to liquidate more shares to contribute to the deal, right? Tyler, I think that's a very meaningful point. If you look at the financing that Elon Musk had teed up for this bid, roughly $12.5 billion of debt financing was collateralized by his Tesla stock. That is a huge amount of leverage. And that was initially lined up at a time, to your point, that Tesla's share price was higher. So this idea that he's going to multitask, the idea that he is going to be splitting his time potentially as an interim CEO at Twitter, on top of you know, running the golden goose that is Tesla, I, clearly Tesla shareholders aren't buying into that. And that impacts directly his ability to get that financing at attractive enough terms for Twitter. It's hugely intercomplicated. The interplay is tough. I think that must be nerve wracking for Elon Musk right now. It, it must be. And he's, of course, got his space ventures, which seem to be very successful. But he is, uh, well, he is a multitasker. And thank you very much. We appreciate it. Good to see you back uh, during the week again. Thanks, Tyler. You bet. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.